Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL, and I'm out here at the uh, Folk Art Center uh, on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Um, it's noisy out here. You're going to hear buses and cars and stuff pass by. It's a very um, kind of touristed spot here along the Blue Ridge Parkway near Asheville. Um, I was out and about today doing some uh, errands, and it's just so pretty. I mean, it's a gorgeous day outside. There's a few clouds in the sky. But a front's moved through, it's very blustery, very cold, uh, but cold doesn't bother me, so that doesn't matter. Um, and I decided I wanted to stop and do a quick activation. So um, I checked in the back of my car, I always keep a radio with me and an antenna with me at all times, just for this sort of thing, a totally impromptu uh, activation. So I found one, uh, I had the Elecraft KX2 in the car, and I do have a little wire antenna with me. It needs a little work. It needs to be fixed because I broke it. Um, and I'm not going to fix it in the field right now. I've got the Elecraft KX2 with the charged battery in it. And I have the Elecraft AX1 antenna that lives in this little pack. I apologize in advance. It's very blustery today, so you're probably going to hear some mic noise. Um, and I thought I'd just set this up and we'll see if we can do an activation. My goal today is just to get 10 people in the logs, thus having a valid activation. Blue Ridge Parkway is a very, very popular park in the Parks on the Air program. Uh, so um, I don't expect a ton of activity um, at all. And uh, it's a Monday morning, uh, you know, here. <laughs> That's near 11 o'clock, I guess, uh, a.m. in the morning here. So not necessarily a popular time either on a Monday morning. So I'm going to keep expectations low and uh, we'll see what we can do. But the AX1 is a very compromised antenna. It's very small. Um, and I thought I'd just go ahead and set it up here um, live. I haven't done anything yet other than deploy two counterpoise wires. The uh, AX1 ships with, um, I think it's a 31 or 33 foot counterpoise for 40 meters. Uh, if you get the 40 meter uh, extension, or if you're doing 20 meters and above, uh, it'll work off of a 13 meter or 13 foot counterpoise. Uh, so I've got both of them deployed on the ground here. I need to pick up the one for uh, this is my 13 foot one right here. Uh, when I wind these, I wind them in a figure eight configuration on my uh, fingers to um, make it easier to deploy later. They don't tangle as much. One of the negatives is though they kind of act like a spring when you have them out. And I really do have to stretch things out kind of nicely so that they um, really deploy their full lengths. When they're matching up at the ground, it does, it's not as important uh, as if they were elevated, but still. Okay, so uh, let's see, I've got my uh, KX2 here. Uh, let's go ahead and set up the, KX, the AX1 antenna. Move this off. It's got my logbook here. I brought a set of paddles. I'm not going to use the KX uh, PD2, I think is what they're called, paddles. I'm not going to use those this time. I'm just going to use uh, my own. Okay, now I have um, uh, I have the bipod adapter, which I really like. Uh, it allows me to operate the KX uh, or the AX1 on um, directly connected to my KX2, which makes it super portable. And that's the thing. Uh, this is a compromised antenna, but it's also extremely portable. Like, I mean, it really couldn't be more portable than it is. Before I get along too far here, though, let me take my counterpoise and hook it up to the chassis of the radio to get a good ground contact here. Let's see. Here we go. I like to make a Good contact because we definitely you cannot operate this really without a counterpoise wire uh, very important to have that in play okay and now I'll go ahead and connect this bipod adapter sir I'm probably in your way doing this and I just adjust it so that the antenna is sticking basically straight up okay now since I'm using the 40 meter uh, band I'll uh, put on the 40 meter extension right here connect that I don't know if it's my hands today or what there we go okay and I also got to make sure I've got it set to 40 meters I do 
and now I'll get to telescoping with. Now I have found with this antenna sometimes it has to be tuned. Uh, this antenna has to be tuned. Uh, the KX2 and the KX3, their internal, in, internal antenna tuners can definitely do this though. However, if I don't have this counterpoise out correctly, sometimes I don't get a good match. So I want to make sure that I do. Now uh, this will be hard to see, but I'm going to extend the um, uh, antenna here. Let's see. Extend it all the way. I do it kind of carefully. And I'll back up and kind of show you what it looks like. Keep in mind, it's really windy today, but you can see how tall that antenna is. It's not terribly tall, not a very high antenna, but without a doubt, this is the most compact antenna I use. I mean, I could take this on an airplane. No one would ever know it. It's so tiny when it breaks down. And now let's see if we can, uh, get on the air here and work some stations. It doesn't require any more than this, just your counterpoise and your antenna. Hopefully we can tune up on 40 meters, we'll see at least. I may need to, I need to get my fingers working. It is kind of chilly uh, this morning. I've already gone into my log. I always try to do this and I put in the um, park number, the date I'm operating and the name of the park. And then I usually put in the hour of when I'm starting, which is about 1600. In fact, it's about, it's 1602 in universal time right now. And, uh, and then I'll get started here and uh, we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to turn on the radio. I don't know if you'll be able to hear the audio very well with all this wind today, but we'll give it a go. I'll try to lower this a bit and give you a little bit better view here as I'm operating, hopefully. If you've never watched one of these videos before, this is a real-time, real-life video. This is not going to be edited. Um, my goal is to work 10 stations. And if I work 10 stations and there are a couple extra people calling me, I'll work them as well. But as soon as I've done with that, I'm, I'm done. I just want to get 10 and leave. This is not a rare park, so no one's really looking for it. Uh, the people who are working me today are just people who are doing it out of the kindness of their heart, really, and just to maybe add to their numbers. So I'm going to move down here to my favorite frequency for activating, which is 7063. And I'll listen for a little bit, see if I hear anything. Probably not too much today. Okay, I'm not hearing anything. It sounds free to me. I'll go ahead and hit my ATU button and we'll see if we can find a match. I got a one-to-one -one match. Yeah, that works. Now, a one-to-one -one match does not mean I'm going to get a full 10 watts out of this antenna. My affected, effective uh, power out of the antenna is going to be much lower than that, mainly because this is an electrically um, shortened antenna. A 40-meter antenna would be, a quarter wave would be much, much bigger than this. But, hey, you know, this works. Whatever works. Now, what I want to do, I've, uh, I'll go ahead and start my CW memory keyer and have it send my call sign and uh, POTA and CQ. It'll do this over and over. Hopefully, because I did right before I came here, I scheduled the event, I scheduled my activation on the POTA website specifically so that it would spot me. I didn't do it for any other reason. Um, usually I'll schedule bigger activations when I'm going out further away, but uh, just so people know about it. The Blue Ridge Parkway, eh. You know, it's mainly just so I can get spotted and the uh, reverse beacon network will pick me up and the POTA website will spot me. We'll see what happens here. Hopefully we'll get somebody. We have to keep expectations very, very low for this antenna. It's surprised me before, but I don't think propagation's very good today. So I'm not expecting a lot out of this. I'll warm up my hands. <laughs> Put my finger here so I can stop the uh, keyer if someone calls me back. If the RBN picks me up.
you can actually stop the memory keyer um, in beacon mode or repeat mode like this by uh, just touching one of the sides of your paddle too. I mean, that's a way to do it. But then you're sitting a dit or a da. And if I would have thought about it in advance, I, this is actually kind of a bad practice I did here, but I know the bands are so quiet today. Um, normally I would listen and tune up and send QRL, question mark, see if anybody else is on frequency. Um, and I really should have done that, but I'm, when I'm doing videos, I, <laughs> I forget to do things, frankly. I have no way to check my uh, spots here, so um, I'll just have to trust in the reverse beacon network. Uh, one of the reasons I should say that I put out two counterpoise wires is because, as I said, to work 20 meters, I'll need to use the 13 foot uh, counterpoise. And uh, I just found that it works better, it gets a better match. Um, I can kind of shorten the uh, 31 foot one by, you know, probably, uh, by, you know, folding it on itself or something, but um, I just would rather just use the 13 foot one. It's so easy to take out and put up, it's not a big deal. But I usually do that in advance so I don't have to stop for very long to do it when I'm operating. It sounds very quiet today. We may not get anyone today. Who knows? If I had deployed a wire antenna today, I'd get a lot, lot, lot better results. Um, because it's just a much more efficient antenna. Get a lot more uh, bang for my watt. Um, out of those antennas. That and again, it's a Monday morning, so there may not be many people listening right now or looking for parks. So people ask me what I think about the Elecraft KX2 and uh, what I love about this radio is it is literally a shack in one little tiny box. Uh, people talk about a shack in the box and this is really the thing. Um, inside I've got uh, a, lithium, uh, a lithium polymer battery. Um, made by Elecraft and it, it'll run this radio for well over an hour um, at a full 10 watts calling CQ like this. Um, after that uh, the voltage goes down and it drops down to 5 watts which is not a big deal. And uh, it's just uh, it's it's so versatile because it also has a really really good antenna tuner in it. Um, the ATU in this I can pretty much tune anything with it. Uh, anything at all and it works. Um, and I love that about this uh, radio. Um, I know that when I've got this with me, and in fact if I've got my little paddles that hook onto the front here, um, I can operate pretty much anywhere CW, and if I've got my mic with me I can do single sideband, and I can tune up anything. If I just have two lengths of wire, I've got a banana uh, adapter, banana plug adapter thing I can put in there. and. Uh, um, I can put one radiator and one counterpoise out, and the radiator is usually about 28 and a half feet or something, and I can work, I think, all the way down to 80 meters even uh, with it. Again, not efficiently, but I can do it. Well, I'm not having a lot of luck here. I'm really curious if I'm actually getting spotted or not. Sometimes the network does not pull spots from the RBN for whatever reason. 
Normally I would have expected at least one call by now. He's giving me a 559. Five, <clears throat> in Tennessee. Sometimes I'll wait around a little bit to see if someone else calls after that. Now that pretty much confirms that the reverse beacon network probably picked me up. So that takes out some of my concern about that. One thing I've discovered about the um, AX1 antenna, when I'm doing 40 meters, if I have a wire antenna up and I'm doing 40 meters, I can, I usually catch states, uh, you know, a couple states away from me. Uh, I'm here in North Carolina and I'll get states like, you know, Pennsylvania, Maryland, uh, Ohio, Indiana, um, Alabama, uh, you know, uh, Florida. I'll get states like that. There are a couple of states away and that's sort of where the skip zone is, I guess. Um, when I'm using this, it's a, such a smaller antenna it just it does it acts almost more like an invis antenna nbis uh and that uh, i pick up more local contacts usually states that are just one state away or neighboring states and that's uh that's okay actually um it's fine like i don't see some of these call signs as often because i'm usually uh i usually don't hear them because they're next door I'll set this back on repeat. Whenever I'm using really compromised antennas like this, I mean, I'm using this one today, frankly, because it's the one I have. It's the one I'm a big believer in. You just use the antenna you got. Um, uh, I actually, except for recently, I normally operate with resonant antennas. Uh, they give you just more bang for your buck. Um, I should say more bang for your watt, though, really. Uh, you just, they're more efficient, so you, you get more signal out of those uh, antennas and that's really nice the um, uh, but the the glory of little tiny antennas like this is that you can um, put them on the air so quickly and this AX1 antenna you could take anywhere like you can take it to a historic site maybe that because there are definitely park sites that will not, under any circumstances, allow you to put up a real antenna. They don't want anything going into trees. They don't want any stakes in the ground. They may not even want something just set up on the ground. But with a picnic table, you can do this. And no one's going to complain about this because, frankly, it's like having a, a portable shortwave radio sitting up here. No one's going to say a thing about it. And that there's a lot of uh, advantage to that. And also, the AX1's great if you're doing, like, air travel and you want to take your transceiver with you and work some contacts um, 
since it's a vertical, it is prone to uh, picking up electrical noises. Uh, that is one of the negatives um, with it. It's not like a, a loop or anything. But um, uh, if you can get away from the noise a little bit, even if you're at a hotel... I think that's it. I got his call sign right, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to send him my pre-recorded um, seven threes and salutations and stuff. He's from Pennsylvania, so that's not, that's not bad at all. Here working 10 watts with this little tiny antenna. We may move up to 20 meters here in a second and see what happens. We've got two contacts so far, that's not bad. If I had an unlimited amount of time, I could sit out here until I know I have all of my contacts in the bag. Today, my time's actually pretty limited, so I may not worry about it too much if I don't get a, if I don't get a full activation. My goal is to have 10, if I don't get 10, yeah, that's okay. This is really important and I almost forgot to do it. You want to mark down your um, meter band that you're on uh, when you're doing your contact so that later on you can go back through. You don't have to have your exact frequency, but having the meter band uh, is very helpful. I mean, in fact, it's a, necess it's a necessity because when you're logging, you at least need to know the meter band you were on, the contact, and the time. Those things are the most important parts of the contact. You don't actually enter in your logs the state that they're from, but that's a part of the exchange uh, that we do. Actually, when I'm sending, um, in s okay. Okay, so I got four contacts so far.
So South Carolina, I've got a total of five now. This contact here, I wrote down part of their call sign. That, I may have misunderstood in 4HID. Wow, that's so slow. I'm having a hard time with it. <laughs> Let me turn down my uh, speed here real quick. Let's see if I can maybe scratch it. Up. I don't hear them now. I'm not sure who that was that was sending a hand key, but I'll try to slow down for them because I really try to work people who are learning Morse code. That sounds like an adjacent signal, actually. So I've got five, let's see. Sometimes I'll number these just so I can See them a little easier. Oh, whoops. This is what happens when I'm talking and trying to do something at the same time. I'm not good at that. Six. I'll mark these out for right now. This is my buddy Mike, K8RAT. And actually, this is Eric, um, WD8RIF, who I worked earlier. Both of them are in Ohio, and I'm a part of the Southeast Ohio Radio Adventure Team, or Sewer Rats. Let's see if anybody else comes in after here or no? Okay. So I got seven, so I only need three more to have a valid activation. I'm pretty sure I can achieve that today without getting a too long of a video. But, you know, 
at the end of the day, um, would this work better if I had a wire antenna? Yeah. And um, it takes me all of 10 minutes maybe to deploy a really nice wire antenna. So it's not a big deal uh, to do that. And I prefer using wire antennas. But in a pinch, like uh, today, this is what I've got. This works. Um, so far I've got seven contacts. That's all in the space of about, what, 16, 15 minutes uh, that I started working. That's not bad at all. Actually, it's pretty good uh, numbers for that. Um, guessing propagation's <whistles> dismal today. Somebody's tuning up on me. Um, I don't like tuner uppers. <laughs> Let me change my filter a little bit. Now if I narrow my filter, they come back in, it'll be a little harder for them to mess up my, whoops. It'll be a little harder for them to mess up my copy. I have to admit, I have been uh, guilty of tuning up like that on top of people before. But that's been because I've used an ICOM radio, and um, I am not used to using. I don't. Whoops. Okay, got it. Okay, I probably shouldn't have done that. I probably should have just sent him seven threes and dit dit. That's all he really needed, but ah, I like sending my call sign too, so I'll just do that. I'll call one more time, but right there I've got 10 contacts. That's all I needed to have a complete activation, so I've got a valid activation now with 10 contacts. And, uh, I mean, really, that's uh, all there is to it, and that's the reason why 
it's it's in So anyway, that's all I need. I'm on 11 now. Um, you know, this antenna is compromised, but it gets the job done. If you're wanting to do an activation quickly, hey. So that's New Hampshire. That's not bad at all for 10 watts and a little tiny antenna on probably a bad propagation day. Okay, so we're up to 13 contacts. I'll stop this whenever I have nobody else calling me back, really. Okay, so I'm going to be quiet here for just a little while. If someone calls me, I'll go for it. But if I look at this, all this is on 40 meters. I've got Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Ohio, South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Indiana, New Hampshire, and Florida. I mean, that's a really nice spread across the eastern coast of the U.S., um, all with a very, very small antenna. And uh, I, uh, I think I'll call it quits today. I need to get back to the house and do some things, so I'm going to send QRT. Sometimes people will call you after you send QRT because they're, they've are they been waiting to hear you. Um, but I'll turn this off now so <laughs> no one else can call me. But this is what I love about this. I mean, and this is the joy of QRP in my opinion. Uh, I'm operating 10 watts. I mean, uh, and some people wouldn't consider that QRP. I I'd, I'd just really consider it low power instead of QRP. A lot of people consider QRP to be five watts and less, but I'm probably not actually getting five watts of effective power out of this antenna. And um, especially in CW, it's just so easy to operate. Uh, I could have come out here with a 100 watt radio and a lot bigger antenna. I would have gotten more attention, maybe had a little more density, maybe a bit more of a pileup. But this was pretty active operating, uh, really only in the beginning, for maybe the first five minutes, it was kind of quiet, and uh, uh, it stacked up pretty quickly. So little antennas like this, um, yeah, they're compromised, they don't work that well uh, compared to bigger resonant antennas, but you really can't complain, they get the job done. And my goal was to have a valid activation, which is 10 contacts, and I did that today. If my goal was to do DX or my goal was to collect a whole bunch of other uh, parks today, then I would have gone with a different antenna. But this is all I had in the car. And uh, 
I've been able to knock out an activation here. I'm at 30, I guess I started uh, about 36 minutes ago. So I really can't complain. Anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, if you liked this uh, video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, that would be great. Um, if you didn't like it, just don't watch any more videos of mine. <laughs> this isn't for everyone. These are kind of uh, real-time, real-life videos. I really uh, do these so that you have a chance just to kind of sit down with someone and kind of see how a park activation goes, and that's pretty much it. I'm not a, a wonderful CW operator. You can probably tell that by uh, watching how I operate, but... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I should tell people, these uh, paddles are made by N0SA. Uh, he doesn't really market them, uh, but you are able to sometimes contact him, maybe through his QRZ address, and uh, see if he's still offering them. He sort of retired, but uh, I love these paddles. And the great thing about them is when I'm done with them, I can kind of push them into their uh, case, uh, which makes them great for uh, travel. Uh, the KXPD2 paddles that attach to the KX2, I use those a whole lot. But um, I, I actually prefer having paddles I can hold in my hand that aren't attached to the radio when I can do that. For space, though, you can't beat the ones that attach to the front of the KX2. I do like those as well. Anyway, everybody take care and uh, enjoy the week. Try to get out there and do a little field operation if you can. Seven threes.